Far to the east, over ranges and rivers, lies a single, solitary peak. The dwarves are determined to reclaim their homeland. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Visual Verse. It is your host, Ayande Joseph. Today, we are going to talk about The Hobbit. But before we get into it, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, as most of you guys are not subscribed, and I appreciate so much any and all support. Anyways, let's get straight into it. I'll be going over all three movies, An Unexpected Journey, The Desolation of Smog, and The Battle of Five Armies. Now, The Hobbit is the prelude to the very famous series, The Lord of the Rings, the book originally done by J.R.R. Tolkien and made into film by Peter Jackson. So it's about Bilbo Baggins, who only has a very small role in The Lord of the Rings. Why they made The Lord of the Rings movies first, I don't know. I think it's because those were three books, so there was kind of more content to go over, and The Hobbit was actually one book that was smaller than any of the individual Lord of the Rings books. So Peter Jackson really had to do a job of stretching the content and material in The Hobbit to fulfill three movies worth. But first, to start with the first movie, An Unexpected Journey. This movie was filmed 10 years after the conclusion of Return of the King, which is the third movie in the Lord of the Rings series. Peter Jackson released a vlog series going through his production of The Hobbit. And it's just so cool to see the behind the scenes and how big of a production this really was and how much time, energy, and just overall management there was for this. And I know that this happens on all these different movies, but the fact that they're in New Zealand, well into New Zealand, so they're in a smaller city and they're just having to create these elaborate sets to really immerse us in this fictional Middle Earth realm. But honestly, I love the first movie so, so much. I think that all the actors were spot on. Now the first movie covers Bilbo Baggins, a hobbit who, they're not known as you know the adventurers or the fighters of this Middle Earth realm, but yet they're the ones that sit in their own pocket of their world and kind of relax and mellow. But yet he's approached by this wizard Gandalf and he's told that he has an incredible journey ahead of him and he needs to come to help these dwarves reclaim their homeland. That's basically theme for the remaining two movies as well. And along the way, they go through all these trials and tribulations and meet all these diverse and different characters that either add or take away from the plot. And man oh man, do I love it. I actually read The Hobbit book before I read The Lord of the Rings, again, because The Hobbit book is not long at all. J.R.R. Tolkien was really just getting his feet wet in this fictional Middle Earth world. But I think it's also just as beautiful. I think when it's a little bit more simple, it's really easy to dive into and really understand and comprehend fully in comparison to the lord of the rings there's just so many things going on at all different times and it's hard to wrap your head around sometimes which is why it's so impressive that peter jackson did such a magnificent job making those three films be the best trilogy in history going back to the hobbit honestly as i said the characters are fantastic all of the actors are amazing they really had chemistry and it's clear from seeing these behind the scenes vlogs that they really trusted each other and loved working with each other moving on to the story i feel like as i said the story is pretty simple you have dwarves that are trying to reclaim their homeland from a dragon it's so cool how they wrap everything together and how the little small storylines and plot holes start you know fitting together in fact that there aren't any plot holes that you know it's meant to be in it's just amazing writing brought into amazing production by Peter Jackson. And finally, looking at the music, the music and composing is just perfect. I mean, I literally can't complain at all. There are songs that are so iconic that when you hear them, you know exactly where they're from, what movie they're from, what point in the movie they're from, and what type of emotion they evoke in you, which I feel like is so special. That's what any producer or screenwriter wants you to think. I mean, looking at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse and Into the Spider-Verse, those soundtracks are just so iconic, Metro Boomin, Sway Lee, that you know, anytime you hear one of those songs, you know exactly what moment they are referring to. And man, oh man, I absolutely love The Hobbit. Please let me know if you've watched it down in the comments. If you have, make sure you have a like, comment, subscribe. As always, I will see you next time.